Hello everyone, this is Sir Aris. Today, let us talk about directional derivative and uh, certain expressions involving this NABLA operator. Um, consider a region, suppose you are in a, in a region where temperature uh, varies, for example, here and in this corner, it's relatively hot then uh, suppose this is your position which is say just warm not as hot as this corner here and in this opposite corner it is cold and suppose you have here on the um, remaining corners just as warm as where uh, you are so if, if you go if you move from your position to this upper left corner the change in temperature would be greater than zero when you go from uh, meaning it increases in temperature if you go to towards the cold corner your change in temperature would be less than zero but if you go to other corners the change in temperature would be around or it would be equal to zero if you have the same temperature. So the rate of change of temperature with distance depends upon the direction in which uh, you move. So this rate of change is called a directional derivative. Suppose delta s is an element of distance um, or arc length in a given direction. Delta t is the corresponding change of temperature. We want to find the limiting value of delta t over delta s. That is, we set the we find the value as this delta s approaches zero, and that is our directional derivative uh, dt by ds. Another example: suppose we are standing at this at a point on the side of a hill. So suppose this is your hill. Um, say you are somewhere, say here, uh, and consider um, coordinate system such that this is the z axis. So z is the height. So if you go uphill, the change in height is the delta z is greater than zero. If you go downhill, delta z is less than zero. But if you just go around, say at the same height, delta z is equal to zero. So the direction of the steepest slope is the direction in which this directional derivative has its largest absolute value. It's, it's negative, it's downhill, uphill, it's positive. So um, if it's very steep, whether it's uphill or downhill, it would give you a very large um, directional derivative. Suppose you are given a scalar phi. We want to find d phi by ds, so the rate of change of phi with distance at a given point x naught, y naught, z naught, and in a given direction. So suppose these are x naught, y naught, and z naught, and we want to go here. Suppose this is x, y, z. So let u be the that direction. So we go towards this direction. Um, u is a unit vector, but we want to go a distance s, so we multiply s by u. So this vector here is u times s. So in this case, we can write x um, or a vector x, y, z. Um, minus vector x naught y naught z naught is just equal to um, u s or that's i a plus j b plus k c times s or from here we get uh, x equals so x here the components x equals x naught plus 
a times s y equals y naught plus um, b times s and z equals z naught plus c times s. So if you substitute x, y, z, this values x, y, z into phi, then phi becomes just a function of one variable. And using chain rule, we can find the phi by ds as a summation or partial of phi with respect to x dx by ds plus partial of phi with respect to y dy by ds partial phi with respect to z duz ds dx by uh, ds so if you have x here take derivative with respect to s you are left with a so this becomes partial phi with respect to x a similarly partial phi with respect to y dy ds dy ds is just b partial phi with respect to z would be c and this can be written as partial phi with respect to x i hat plus partial phi with respect to y j hat plus partial phi with respect to z k hat dot a i plus b j plus c e, k which is just our unit vector u we define the gradient of phi uh, by this operator it's read as del phi so we read, read it as del phi okay that's that's how we we read it or grad of phi meaning the gradient of phi as this one here this is our gradient of phi so that we can write the directional derivative as um, del phi dot u Example, find the directional derivative of phi x squared y plus x z at 1, 2, minus 1 in direction a, 2i minus 2j plus k. So a is the direction, um, we set a unit vector. So the unit vector in the direction of a would be a divided by a absolute value. So that's 2i minus 2j plus k divided by so take the um, magnitude, so that's 2 squared plus 2 squared plus 1, 4 plus 4 plus 1, that's 9. That's, so this would be square root of 9, that's, square, uh, that, that's 3. So you have 1 over 3, 2i minus 2j plus k. Now let's solve for del phi. So del phi is partial um phi with respect to x plus partial phi with respect to y j plus partial phi with respect to z k so partial phi with respect to x would be so we take the derivative of this partial derivative of this with respect to x so i'll write i first so that's 2xy plus z okay partial phi with respect to y that's x squared and k our partial phi with respect to z that would be x now at the specified point one two minus one we can so we can determine this the value of this so the phi um, let me write, let me specify that it's at 1, 2, minus 1. So this would be um, x is 1, y is 2, so this becomes 4, z is minus 1, so that's 3, 3i. x is 1, so you have j, um, k is, or x again here is 1, so that's plus Okay. Okay. So at um, again still the same point, but we're solving for d five by ds. 
So again, we'll specify here 1 through minus 1. So that would be del phi at evaluated at 1 through minus 1 dot u. So this is 3i plus j plus k dot u is 1 third 2i minus 2j. plus k. And then you do the, that product should be 3 times 2 divided by 3 that's 2. 1 times minus 2 divided by 3 that's minus 2 thirds. 1 times 1 times 1 third that's 1 third. So minus 2 thirds plus 1 third is minus 1 third. Um, this would be 6 over 3. 6 over 3 minus 1 over 3, that's 5 over 3. So this is the directional derivative evaluated at 1 to um, minus 1. Uh, along or in the direction of towards A. So from the finish of that product, we may write, uh, if you know the absolute, the, the magnitude of del phi and u, uh, that would be del phi u cosine theta. Theta is the angle between u and del phi. So since u is in a vector, then we have del phi cosine theta. This, this means that um, d phi ds is the projection of del phi on the direction u. Um, the largest value would be of, of d phi ds is that when delta phi, uh, or the, the largest value is delta phi, that happens when theta is zero. Um, or that means that del phi is, uh, or u is in the direction of delta phi. Now, if u is opposite the direction of delta phi, then we have negative. So that's the largest rate of decrease. Now, suppose u is tangent to the surface. Suppose you have, you have a constant surface. So suppose this is a surface with constant uh, scalar field phi. Suppose at some point, let's say at some point here, there's u tangent to this point. Um, since here on this surface, phi is constant, you take the derivative, you'll, you'll get zero. Um, so it would uh, follow that uh, if u is tangent, then the derivative, directional derivative is zero. So in this case, del phi that u is zero. So del phi is perpendicular. So if you have a del phi, let's say it could be perpendicular, say in this direction, or it could be in this direction, um, that would be our del phi. We cannot specify the direction, the two possible directions, but it is perpendicular. Um, so when this, when this happens, um, del phi is perpendicular. So del phi is often called the normal derivative. We can write del phi or del of a function, scalar function f, uh, as given in, in cylindrical and spherical coordinates by these expressions. So let us discuss other expressions involving the del operator. So this del is a vector operator um, that we can write by itself like this, although it doesn't have any meaning we have to apply this to a, um, to a scalar, okay? But aside from that, if you have a vector field, you can also apply this to a vector, but we define a, not as a gradient, but as a divergence of something called a divergence of V. So V being a vector field, del, yeah, uh, del applied to V would mean that uh, that applies to V as a divergence. So we define the divergence by this. So we 
simply take the dot product of this and this. So sometimes it's called, uh, you can write it also as div v or divergence of v. So it's partial of vx with respect to x, partial v with respect to y, plus partial vz with respect to z. You can also take the cross product. In that case, that's called the curl of v. For the curl, uh, you just take the, the, the cross product, but make sure that the partial derivatives always apply on, or would first apply on v. So it's always on the left side of v. We also define the Laplacian of phi that is, you have del phi, if del phi, del acts on phi, it, it turns the whole thing into a vector. So you can take the divergence of that, or that is uh, just the Laplacian of the original function. Okay, so it's partial, second partial derivative phi respect to x squared plus partial squared phi respect to y squared, partial squared phi respect to z squared. Um, Divergence and Laplacian, we can, you can also write in cylindrical and spherical coordinates like this. So let's consider an example. Evaluate del cross del cross v. Um, recall from the previous um, lecture that if you have a cross b cross c, um, this can be written using the back cub rule or simply um, a more general way. You have B minus C. So it's purport, it, this is perpendicular to B cross C. So it lies along plane uh, containing B and C. So it's a linear combination of B and C. And the, the coefficients are the remaining that product of the remaining vectors. So here you have a dot c, and here you have a dot b. Okay. Um, for this case here, that is also uh, the the back cap rule is also applicable. However, there's something that we need to consider. Um, take note that here, if if you call this a B and C, A and B should always be to the left of C because these are derivatives. So C should always be to the right. So we, which means that we cannot write it like this. Okay, C should always be to the to the um, right. A and B may be interchanged, so we can write it as del. Let's say B first, del dot B, B C. Okay, minus um, here you have uh, C is to the right, so we'll have no problem with this. So the, uh, that del C, which is our V, okay. Um, we can still, um, Further write this as del del dot v minus this is the Laplacian, so you have del squared of v. So I think that's it. That's for uh, the the final form of our expansion of del cross del cross v. Another example, find del that phi v phi is a scalar, v is a vector. So if you can if you think of this as a derivative, then derivative of product is just um, derivative of the first times the second plus the first times derivative of the second. So you can you can think of, um, let's say, this del operator acting only on phi, okay, plus del operator acting only on 
V. Okay, it's del acting only on phi and del acting only on V. Now for us to remember that, we can put a subscript here, say we put um, phi, and here we put V, to signify that this del phi only acts on phi, and this del V only acts on V. Okay, now let's try to uh, simplify this to um, separately. Say del phi dot phi v. So phi is um, is a scalar. You can take that out of the dot product. So this would simply give us del phi phi dot v. So basically, we can take we can just take um, the the gradient of phi um, this derivative only acting on phi and then after that you take the dot product with v and typically so that we uh, don't get um, confused in our derivative operator here we can write this v to the other side or if you put a parenthesis that's also fine which means that derivative only acts on phi or to be safe you can put v uh, del phi phi okay doesn't matter because that product uh, would commute as long as this operator is not acting on v and it isn't because this phi here uh, subscript means that del only acts on phi. For the second term, del acting on v dot del v or phi v. So here we can all can remove this phi um, out of the dot product, but del v is not acting on phi, so we have phi del v dot v. So our del dot phi v, okay, del here generally operates on phi and v, can be written as the sum of um, v dot del. So here you can remove uh, the subscript because um, there's nothing else to apply this del to, so it's understood that del only applies on phi. Similarly, here you can write phi del dot um, v, divergence of v, without the subscript because there's it's only v here. So you can write here um, our del, our divergence of uh, phi v as del dot. Um, del phi plus um, phi times divergence of phi.